Hi, Bill Priestley here and uh, welcome to another video. This video is on a very sensitive subject. It's a, it's a very graphic topic um, and it could be upsetting for some viewers. Today we're going to be talking about female genital mutilation. medical reason and often by someone with no medical training or with no expertise and who are using inadequate tools. The victim is rarely anaesthetized and often lacks the use of antiseptics and the procedure is often performed under forced restraint. A healthy and functioning vagina is a miraculous piece of biological evolution. It's uncommon that during childhood or in the teenage years, anyone should have reason to interfere to correct a vagina for a valid medical reason. Clearly, the only people who should do so are qualified doctors in a clinical environment like a hospital, and doing so should be with the full consent of a person in question and also their parents. It shouldn't be for cosmetic reasons, it shouldn't be done for appearance, and it shouldn't be done because of pressures of convention or societal expectation. FGM is the partial or total removal of the external parts of the female genitalia. So, for the boys and young men watching, there's a common misconception that the female sexual organ is entirely internal. And while the reproductive function of the vagina is hidden inside the pelvis of the woman, the exterior of the vagina has numerous external parts. The external parts of the reproductive organ is called the vulva. And the main parts of the vulva are known as the labia majora, labia minora, and the clitoris. And then there's the vaginal opening itself. Let's consider the four major types of FGM. One, the removal of the clitoris. Two, removal of the clitoris and the labia, the lips of the vulva. This might include the majora as well as the menorah, or just the menorah. Three, infibulation. This is uh, a narrowing of the vaginal opening by repositioning the labia and stitching the opening. This might or might not include removal of the clitoris. And then finally, any other form of surgically adjusting the outer appearance of the vagina or the vulva for non-medical reasons. And this can include piercing, cutting, scraping, removing or cauterizing the skin or flesh in that area. FGM can cause major and severe bleeding, problems with urinating, cysts, and later complications in reproduction and childbirth. FGM is associated with newborn death. Victims of FGM often suffer with significant infections and problems like sepsis can be fatal. It's believed that 200 million women in the world have been victimized in this way, and predominantly we're looking at the regions of Africa, the Middle East and Asia where these crimes are most commonly encountered. The following communities are believed by the Home Office to present a higher risk of FGM. Somali, Ethiopian, the Sudanese, Nigerian, Yemeni, 
Indonesian, Kenyan, Sierra Leonean, Egyptian, Eritrean and Kurdish. When is FGM likely to happen? Well, there's been evidence uh, of FGM that's been committed against newborn babies. Also uh, being committed during childhood um, or in the approach to puberty or as puberty uh, begins. Sometimes it's a procedure that happens before marriage and in some cases even during pregnancy. There are signs to be aware of to spot when a girl might be at risk of FGM. In addition to being of a cultural background from a relevant region, any of the following in combination might give reasonable suspicion. A relative known as a cutter visits the family from abroad. A ceremony is to take place where a girl is said to become a woman or to be prepared for marriage. Another member of the family has suffered FGM and speaks out about it. The family arranges a long holiday overseas or visits family abroad. A girl has an unexpected or long absence from school. A girl suddenly cannot keep her attention on classes and struggles to keep up with her peers. A girl runs away from home or is found planning to escape the family environment. Female genital mutilation is also known by these alternative names. Female circumcision, cutting, suna, gudnin, halalis, tahur, magrez and kitan. The purpose of FGM is to control female sexuality, desire and sexual activity or promiscuity, often for honour-based reasons. Sometimes the reasons are cited in terms of tradition and religion, hygiene or cleanliness, or cultural identity. Some false ideas exist about it increasing fertility and improving the prospects of marriage. It is seen in some cultures as a rite of passage into womanhood. The claimed benefits of FGM are based on myths. Many communities practice FGM as a tradition and there is an intergenerational pressure to keep that tradition alive. FGM is, broadly speaking, a cultural phenomenon. It happens in the UK and abroad, and sometimes girls are sent out of the UK for the offence to be committed. If someone reveals that they have been a victim of female genital mutilation, or that they are going to have to suffer this form of abuse, it is absolutely essential that the person who receives the disclosure takes the appropriate steps. One, make sure that the victim knows that you are genuinely concerned. You trust and believe them. Reassure them that this situation is not their fault and that you will help them to stay safe. Make sure you tell the victim that what has happened to them or is being planned to take place is not okay. And it's not what happens as part of an average childhood or adolescence. Three, listen carefully and pay attention to what you are told. Not all circumstances are the same. Everyone deserves to be treated as an individual. Four, Persuade the victim to allow you 
to bring people with relevant expertise in to help them. Five, if you're an adult with a school, notify your senior leadership team and your designated safeguarding lead immediately. Six, if you're a student and a peer, go to a trusted and friendly teacher. Go to the school safeguarding team or go to the principal's office as soon as you can. Do not wait. Seven, write the disclosure down while it is fresh in your mind. Capture it accurately and in as much detail as possible. Eight, do not confront or try to negotiate with people who are contemplating this act or who have committed this offence. This is not your job, either as a school professional, nor as a peer or a student or a friend. There are consequences for practicing female genital mutilation. It is a crime, but that is for law enforcement agencies to address and deal with. Nine, be discreet. This is not something for general conversation, either between peers in the lunch hall or in the staff room. Keep a record of who you have told. If other people know, the child in question may be abducted, trafficked or subject to honour-based violence. Your first and most immediate care and priority must remain the safety of the victim and her right to safety. Number 10. Identify whether the child has female siblings in your school or in other schools. Mapping the family will help to prevent further victimisation. If this child is at risk, so are her immediate family members. If this child has been subjected to FGM, it might not be too late to prevent younger siblings from suffering in the same way. Genital Mutilation Act of 2003 at sections 1, 2, 3 and 3A provides relevant legislation for the enforcement of the law to deal with these crimes. In 2003 a law was passed in Parliament which came into force in 2004 and it made female genital mutilation in England and Wales illegal. The key points to understand about this legislation are that a person is guilty of this crime if they exercise, infibulate or otherwise mutilate the whole or any part of a girl's vulva. There are exceptions in law for qualified doctors and midwives who have to do so for proper medical reasons. The law on female genital mutilation also makes it an offence. Section 2. To assist a girl in mutilating her own genitalia. Section 3 makes it an offence for any British citizen to participate and assist in such a ritual while they are abroad. If convicted in Crown Court under sections 1, 2 or 3, the offender could be imprisoned for a maximum of 14 years. Section 3A makes it an offence to fail to protect any girl under the age of 16 from FGM where you have a legal duty of care for the child. This duty of care refers to parental duty of care by people over the age of 18. Failing in that duty of care and being convicted in Crown Court can result in a penalty of seven years imprisonment. Quite correctly, female genital mutilation is one of the most serious offences um, in the laws of England and Wales. There are some significant penalties attached to committing such barbaric acts. I hope that this video has been able to help you to understand what female genital mutilation is, how it happens, why it happens. I'll be doing further uh, videos. If there's anything that you need to know further about this topic, 
I'll be signposting some great references and links that you can find attached to the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.